I have been living in Spain since 1981. That's like 29 years. And in 2008, I had my PhD from the University of Granada. Mm, okay, before I answer this, I'm just, uh, I, I would just like to say that when I went to Spain at that time, Spain has just, it was the moment of the transition from the dictatorship of Franco at that time uh, to the democracy. So Spain was a specific place at that time. And actually, I liked it because uh, coming out from this 40 years of regime, coming to the democracy and the new freedom and the society was opening for every uh, in all the aspects it reminds me a lot of Sudan right now because we are going through the same regime uh, living in Spain as uh, migrants as a female migrants was not easy at all but I have to tell that at that time in the beginning of the 80s there were no many African uh, female migrants so uh, I was like a kind of uh, something different, you know. And uh, because I went to Spain to study, I didn't went uh, as, you know, the migration in Spain right now is for economic reason. Those people who are escaping from war, from poverty, etc. This was not my case, actually. Actually, yes, I did go out from Sudan because at that time, the, with the regime of Nimeri, they started with the Sharia things, and that it was the moment to leave the country, I think. Although Sudan at that time was much better than now. Uh, living there almost 30 years, of course, Spain became my second or maybe first place, first country. Because then I lived more years in Spain than, than in Sudan. I spent the best of my life, you know, my, my youth, uh, the, my time of knowledge and I did everything in, in this moment, you know, in Spain. Then, for me at that time, coming back to Sudan, even when I used to come on vacation, I just, I found myself totally lost in Sudan. And believe me, it's not easy to belong to two cultures and sometimes not to belong to none of them. It's difficult, you know. Now, the other part of the question, coming back to Sudan. Coming back to Sudan for me was a big challenge and I really chose I had this choice. I wanted to come back to Sudan, and after finishing my PhD, I wanted to work in the teaching. And for me, Ahfad University for Women was the best place, and I'm so happy that I am belonging to this place now. Uh, but I discovered that Sudan is not Ahfad. You know, there are so many things going on in Ahfad. But Sudan is a huge country. And actually, I don't have that much time. I'm not doing so much social life or whatever. But I know that there are a lot of things going on. But it was for me many things that I, I saw in Sudan after coming back last year. I came back last year in 2010. It's, everything is it's shocking. I think there is more racism now in Sudan because of the political situation, because of what happened in South Sudan and what's going on in Darfur. I think the people, not the government, the people of the, the regular people, they are changing, their minds are changing. I think the attitude, there, I, I, can't, I can't really swear that there is there are more racism now, I could tell. This is by in the one hand. In the other hand, the situation of women has deteriorated a lot. Women now are in worse, much worse situation than they used to be in our time, in the 70 and 80. I think the women have gone backward. Not the women, but their situation, their legal situation, the social situation. And these two aspects are so important for me. Plus the economical situation and how people are living and the economic crisis and many things has changed. But there are positive stuff. I mean, I can see the young people moving, can see many women trying to do things and doing really great jobs. And then we have the bad news of the secession, the separation of the south of Sudan, which is a bad news. But it is good news for those who choose it. And I'm really glad for them. And I really, really wish them the best of the luck that they can have their new nation, new state, and do it better than us, we from the south of Sudan, north of Sudan. I am involved in the master of the gender and peace and I'm teaching the gender and media, 
introduction to uh, peace and conflict. These issues are basics. And next semester I'm going to be teaching gender and human rights in Africa and, uh, and Middle East. I think in this way, I, I could say that I'm kind of contributing to uh, improve the situation of women by the knowledge, by have these students, and even for me, it's a reflective process to, to see how the situation of women from different aspects, how is the different situation of women in the conflict uh, time, in the peace time, especially Sudan has gone through the worst and the longest uh, war in the south, and we still have war in the west, and, and Sudan is a war place, actually, it seems to. So to see the situation of women and how the women could be involved in the peace process, in the democracy uh, building, in the, in the new Sudan, which is very difficult and very hard. I mean, these goals are difficult right now. But at least uh, mm, being there in this academic world, it's enabled me to get to know good students, good women who really want to do things. And at the same time, I could see there are so many women organizations in Sudan which are doing great jobs and doing good things, but they still need support, space where they can uh, achieve their goals, uh, freedom of movement and of expressing, expressing their works. And the media has a lot of problems, especially for the women issues. So I think that there are so many obstacles, but women are there and doing their best, and this is a good sign.